Hi, this is Destiny from Desfix and welcome back to the hotel management system using Django. In this one, we'll get started working with the update room status. And what we'll pretty much do is write a simple function that will be called every hour to check if a hotel has been booked, checked, expired, and pretty much change the availability status of the particular room based on the checkout status. That is all we'll be doing. Hopefully you will enjoy the video and learn something new. So let's get started. Begin by opening up your code editor and you want to open up the hotel views py and I'll scroll all the way to the bottom and down here I will create a new view called updates room status okay and this one should take a request parameter in there and for now let me pass so this view will be called using ajax which means somewhere at the top, we need to import CSRF exempt from Django views decorator CSRF because since we'll be calling this using, using JavaScript Ajax, there will not be anywhere to pass in the CSRF token. So this is how to also pass in the CSRF um, exempt over here on this view. So after you've passed that in, the very first thing that we want to do down here is get today's date so i'll say today should be equal to time zone time zone dot now and if you want to get a date you pretty much pass in dot date like that so the next thing that we want to do is import time zone from django.utils so scroll all the way to the top and from django dot utils you want to import time zone okay and also take this to the top where we have the django imports so now that we have this i believe that's all we want to do for now let's get started right in the view the very first thing i will want to do is fetch the bookings so i'll say booking should be equal to booking dot object dot filter where the is active is equal to true which means the user has actually paid for this and the booking is active and also for payments we need to check where the payment underscore status is equal to paid let me confirm if this was called paid in the model so this is payment status let me make sure that's are aligned well and we also need to check the payment status see paid over here with a lowercase p okay so now that we have these two things that's what we want to do for fetching the bookings now let's loop through all the bookings then perform operations on each iteration of the booking so i'll say for b in booking and what i firstly want to check is if b dot checked in tracker is not equal to true what do we want to uh oh that should be true like this so if it's not equal to true then what do we want to do let's firstly check if b dot checking date is greater than today which means the checking date is still in the future then what do we want to do let's say b dot check in tracker should be equal to false which means the user have not checked in because the time is still in the future. And then let's save. So what we check here is if B dot checking tracker is not equal to true, then we run all this code, which means the user has not actually checked in. So over here we say if B dot checking date is still in, if B dot checking date is greater than today, which means it's still in the future. And over here, I just want to mark the checking tracker as false again just in case of if it was true for some reason okay so after that now let's look through all the rooms in this particular booking by saying for r in b dot rooms room dot all so now we are trying to look through all the room rooms that we have related to this booking Remember, it's in a many-to-many -many field. That is why I am passing in dot all over here. And what do I want to do? I firstly want to say room dot is available. Please hold on. Let me confirm if that is what I called it in the room. So 
So yep, there you go. It's it's called it's available. So room dot is available should be equal to true. Okay, and then let's save that. So what I pretty much did over here was I checked if the booking date is still in the future, then mark the room as available. I hope that makes sense. So what if the what if the check in date is not is not greater than today, which means it's not in the future. So I'll write an else for that just below the if b dot check in date. And what do I want to do for that one? I will say b dot checked in tracker should be equal to true. If b dot checked in tracker, please understand what's going on here. Checked in tracker is pretty much what we used to keep track of the particular check-in, irregardless of if the user actually came to the hotel to occupy the room or not. We use the check-in tracker to keep track of the dates when the user was supposed to check in and check out. Now, we also have another field called checked-in, which is this one. So this is the actual field that, we, that will get checked when a user in person has visited the hotel and occupied their room. But this one here will automatically be checked regardless of if the user occupied the room or not. Based on their booking date, this will immediately be checked. So let's say a user has scheduled a room for, for 30th March. Now, what our code will do is it will pretty much go through this model and check if the time that they have chosen as their checking date is in the future, then it's make the particular room that they will occupy available so that other users can take it to that particular extent. I hope it makes sense. So we mark this as true and let's save. Okay, so after saving, we also need to perform the same operation that we did here. You could pretty much grab this and put it. Since, the, since this particular check-in tracker is no longer in the future, which means the date might as well be today when the user will be checking in, Let's just go ahead and mark the room availability as false, which pretty much means that that user has taken that room and it's not available for anyone to book it again. I hope that makes sense. So after all this, now below the if b the check-in tracker is not equal to true, I will get down there and I write an else statement. Firstly, for that one, let's check if b dot check in if b dot checkout date is greater than today, which means their checkout date is still somewhere in the future, then let's say I'll do that here. I'll say b dot checkout tracker checkout tracker should be false, and I'll say b dot save. So what this pretty much means is this. Hopefully, you know that this one will check if the check-in tracker is not true, which means the user has not checked in. But if the user has checked in, we're not trying to check if their checkout date has reached. So if their checkout date hasn't reached, which means it's still greater than today, then let's still mark the checkout tracker as false, which means no user can op occupy that room because the time has not reached for the occupants of the room to actually check out. But what if the time has reached for them? Before we do that, I want us to mark the availability of the room to false so that nobody can actually book the room any longer. Now, what if the checkout date is today? What do we want to do? We can actually take, we, let's, let's, not keep, let's actually copy and pull here so we don't have to write everything. Then for this one, I pretty much want to say, B dot checkout tracker should now be true and we save. So after that, let's update the availability of the room for R in B dot room dot all. We want to say R dot is underscore available, which is this one here. Is available should be true. And also I will say R dot save to save that from to save that feature that I just wrote now. That was pretty much everything that we need to calculate the rooms. Uh oh, seems I made a mistake there. All right, so now all we need to do is get back B 
below the for loop and we need to return a HTTP response, a HTTP response that we'll pass in today. So we'll use it to keep track of what today's time is, right? So you can see this very simple code here is what we have. Now in the future, I will keep updating this particular tutorial to show you guys more better ways to perform this operation. Currently, what we will do now is make use of Ajax to call, to make a call to this view every hour, then it will check for the bookings that are in here and perform this operation. Don't worry, like I said, I'll keep updating this tutorial to actually show you guys more better ways to perform this operation without having to do it by relying on the on Ajax. We may actually use things like um, Celery to perform this operation. But for now, we have this. I will go ahead and register it in the hotel URLs. You can call it whatever you want. I will just call it update room status. Let me put that below the checkout and I'll call this update room status. Same as name, same as this. But I don't want to pass in any parameter in here. Just leave it the way it is. It's a very simple function. Now I want you to open up custom JS and scroll all the way to the bottom. This is where we'll write a very simple JavaScript function. So I'll say function and I want to call this, I want to call this um make ajax call to update room status you can actually call it whatever you want but let me just call it make ajax call then let's say dollar ajax so we on the go want to immediately on ajax and what i want to say now is url then passing that url that i wrote over there this one so this is the this is the view that will get called okay Add a slash so it knows that it needs to get to the home page to perform the operation. What is the method type? It gets. There is no need to make it a post method. And also, success function should be let's grab data. And you can actually just log checked room or checked booking. Let me say checked rooms. Okay. So that you can see in your terminal whenever it checks a room. There are a lot of things that you can actually do to this. If you want, you can still immediately save this to model. So you will see how it checks rooms and perform operations like that. But for now, to keep things easy, let's just log checked rooms, okay? And the next thing on my list would be to pass in an error. In case there is an error, let's handle the error. So I'll say function and you know what? I don't want to I don't want to make things too difficult for now. We'll continue with this functionality in the upper videos for now let's just pass the success function and then let's call just below the function we now need to set interval so i will set interval and we need to then pass in the make ajax call and for how long do we want this to run so the best thing would be to run this code every day which means we have to pass in the milliseconds over here which is 86 400 but you shouldn't have its commas okay just like this is enough and now as soon as our application gets mounted this function will get started being called immediately if you want to actually test this out without having to wait for a day just go ahead and reduce the the milliseconds that we have over here you can you could just make this um if you want to make this three seconds you could just say three thousand milliseconds okay so after performing all this operation Let's go ahead and test out the code. I will open up my admin section and right now, this is what I have. I will open up the first, the very first booking that we have over here. And you can see that this booking is not active. So I'll manually mark it as active. As soon as a payment goes through, you want to mark the booking as active. So let's go ahead and mark this booking as active as soon as the payment goes through. So to mark the booking as active as soon as the payment goes through, you can do that in the payment success. Over here where we say this should be paid, you can say booking dot is active should become true as soon as the payment as soon as the payment goes through. All right, now that will be active. So what I want to do here is manually mark this as active. And the checking data as you can see is way in the past. I will make it to be 25th. You see, because 
Today is 26 February, but I am one hour behind the server time. So I will leave it as 25, as February 25. And let's say I want to check out on the 29th, okay, which is the last day of the month. Now with all this, before I actually save that, remember that um, there are a couple of things that we need to do. Firstly, I just thought of something. Going through this code over here, as soon as as soon as a we mark the check-in tracker as true, it makes sense to mark the checked in also as true, which means the user has checked in. And over here, we need to still mark the checked in as false, which means the user hasn't checked in. I don't know if that makes sense. And the same thing that we are doing there is also what we need to do over here. We mark the checked in as false. Okay, but this one is totally up to you how you want to do it. Remember I say that this one can be done by staffs on the counter. So they manually have to check this when the user comes over to the counter and presents their order ID. Just like I said, this one is totally up to you how you want to do it. But for now, I just want to automatically mark it as true so you can see it work in the back end. But most of the time, it's recommended that you just remove this and let the staffs at the counter do it, okay? This is to actually confirm that the user came into the hotel and actually took the room in person. But the checkout tracker will automatically mark it regardless of the user coming to take the room or not. So for now, I'm just leaving the checked in, okay? And also this one, checked in should be true. All right, so with all this out of the way, I believe we have the code that we want. You can also go ahead and print booking if you want and also print B. So remember I marked is active as true. That was all I did. And I changed my booking date to the future, something more realistic. And now I can save and continue editing. This is what we have, right? User hasn't checked in, user hasn't checked out, but their booking is active and paid. Now our code has actually checked like many times, you see. So we've been checking for the rooms. That means as soon as we reload this page now, and let's say the admin is getting back to see if a user has checked a room, you can now clearly see that it's checked in tracker has now been ticked over here. I don't know if that makes sense, which means the time has actually come for them to check in. Does that make sense? And now when they actually check in in person, the staffs at the counter can then click this one and save. And when they check out, they can also click this one and save. It's as simple as that. I, I hope you understand what's going on. So now this one is working as expected. The way the checkout tracker will work is if the checkout date is in the past. So let's say the checkout was supposed to be on the 24th and the check-in was on the 22nd and I save this. After three seconds, it's going to check again. And if I get back here now, you could clearly see that the checkout has been marked, which means that the user has actually checked out of the hotel, which does not concern us if they actually came in or not. Now, this one over here, this two piece of, of this two field over here is what we used to know if the user actually came into the hotel or not. This one is what we used to keep track of their checkout time and their check-in time. I hope all this makes sense. That is pretty much it. If there is something that you don't understand, you can send email to deskvis at gmail.com or drop a comment in the comment section below and I'll be more than happy to help you out. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, mad love. Peace out.